themselves. And let's, think, let's imagine a scenario that this vehicle wants to change left, and this vehicle wants to, uh, wants to change right. So they both want to change to each other's position. And the vehicles are traveling at the same speed. In this case, the vehicles will, the two vehicles will form a grid lock. So the left cannot change, uh, left cannot change right, and the right cannot change left. And this time, transients will try to resolve the deadlock by swapping them. And when transients doing this, doing the, the swapping, it had the vehicles have to be within a certain speed range. So this is the maximum swapping speed, which is equal to five cells per hour. <coughs> the global maximum speed. The last one is driver reaction time, which I introduced in the last slide. So I finished talking about this driver reaction time. Now I want to talk about another model called the cell transmission model, which is very similar, has a very similar idea to cellular automata. But they are different. In the cell transmission model, the rows and the links are also divided into cells. So there is also a lot of cells. But the cell length is not equal to the length of vehicle. It's equal to the distance that a vehicle will travel in one clock interval. So for example, the speed is one meter per second. Then if we set a clock interval to be one second, then the cell length will be one second. It will be, be one meter. If the vehicle can travel 10 meters in the time interval, then the length of the cell will be defined as 10 meters. Okay, let me emphasize, the cell length here is equal to the, the, the distance that a vehicle can travel in a time step. It's not equal to the length of the vehicle. And they have different, very different purpose, purposes. The purpose of cell transmission model uh, by Daganto from UC Berkeley in 1993 was to study the shock waves. So they want to study, they want to have a simple method to study the effect of shock waves. So they employed a lot of assumptions. But the purpose of this was not for macro simulation. It's actually it's an analytical method. Now let me show you what they are. In the cell transmission model, I don't know why it's like this. Let me change it. We only have, we have four things to know, or four symbols. The first thing is NIT, which is the number of vehicles in cell I at time t, number of vehicles in it. The second thing point is capital N, NIT. This is the capacity of cell I at time t. It's the capacity of it, the maximum number of vehicles that a cell can hold. The third one is the YIT, which is the inflow to the cell I between time t and t plus 1, which means the incoming number of vehicles. The fourth one, QIT, is the max inflow, which is the max number of vehicles that can flow into cell I between t and t plus 1. So the, there are two basic formulas. The first formula is easy to understand. This means the number of vehicles in the cell for the next time step uh, or at the time, next time point, will be equal the current number of vehicles plus the incoming vehicles minus the outgoing vehicles. So inflow, the inflow uh, of I at time t will be inflow to this cell, but inflow I plus 1t will be inflow of the, the cell ahead of it, which is also equal to the outflow. So my outflow is equal to the frontal cells uh, inflow. So the number of vehicles will be equal to the original number of vehicles plus inflow minus outflow. So this is flow conservation, easy to understand, correct? Then it employs uh, a simplified assumption. The inflow will be the minimum of three things. First, it will be uh, it, the inflow will be constrained by the total number of vehicles in the backward cell. 
So if there is enough vehicle, you will have, the vehicle, uh, the seller behind mine, behind me, should have enough number of vehicles. Otherwise, uh, it's impossible. Because the speed, because as we mentioned, the length of the cell is equal to the maximum number, uh, is equal to the distance that a vehicle can travel at. So let's consider this cell i. This is i plus 1. This i minus 1. So if here there are a certain number of vehicles, then because this length is defined by the distance that a vehicle will travel, so if a vehicle exists here in the last time step, in the next time step, it will never reach the current cell. So it will not affect the number of vehicles in this cell. So you only have to con consider the number of vehicles in this cell. And that's why they define the length to be the distance traveled by a time interval. So this is first constraint. The vehicle are moving this way. The incoming volume, the incoming flow will not be bigger than the total vehicles in this cell. And it will not be bigger than the maximum flow rate, maximum flow rate defined by Q. Q is the maximum inflow. So they will, this will be the maximum uh, or the saturated flow rate. This is another con uh, constraint. The third constraint is the maximum number of vehicles that this cell can hold. So maximum cells, this cell. So this is capacity of the cell. This is the current, currently occupied number of vehicles. Current occupying number of vehicles. So, for example, the, the the cell can hold 100 vehicles, but now it's already having 50 vehicles in it. Then, in the next time step, here's a simplification: the maximum inflow will be 50. You may have a question: Why here is maximum inflow, and this here is the, the uh, empty space? That's because the, the cell can hold 50 vehicles. Doesn't mean that the cell can have 50 vehicles coming in. You can finally, when, for example, if the cell, if all the vehicles in the cell are already uh, stopped, then the cell can hold another, a lot of vehicles. This doesn't mean the maximum inflow, uh, in, incoming flow rate can be that much. So that's why we have three, they have three uh, limitations. Okay, maybe so, so here you only consider the front cell and the So how about the left and the right cell? Because the car can change the it is, it's here it doesn't uh, consider any link changes things. Link changes things because it's not it's not for micro simulation. It's assuming that all the vehicles that's assumption that all the vehicles are traveling at the same speed, at a constant speed. So the, here is a very stable flow. All the, this is the flow, and each vehicle is traveling at same, an identic, identical speed. Yeah, that, but it's not for simulation. It's for analyze the traffic uh, shockwave. All right. So there's no lane change. It doesn't have. It doesn't have to consider the lane, the lanes. So it's one dimensional. It's one dimensional cells. One cell can consist. Uh, two or three lanes. It doesn't matter. Now, here is an example. Here is an example. Now, this is also a time step space diagram, but this is different from the cellular automaton. This is a time clock, the time. And uh, horizontally, this is the number of cells. So we have 15 cells. In the first time step, or each cell has four vehicles. Each cell has four vehicles. So this is a good, uh, very good status. But at the beginning of the, the second, I mean, in the beginning of this first second, 
the capacity or the incoming max incoming flow rate of this eleven cell has decreased to one. So this is only change. Let's suppose the the link uh, there were four links, but it's redu reduced to one link. Then this figure shows how this reduction of lanes impact the the whole uh, network. So after the inflow rate has reduced to one, this in the next time step there will be only one vehicle, one vehicle coming into this cell, and there will be seven left on the previous cell, and then it will be this will be still one, this will be ten. Then you accumulate. The number of vehicles in the backward cell will accumulate until the number of vehicles reaches its capacity, 14 vehicles per cell. And then you will see this curve representing a shock wave, which means the shock wave, uh, how do we find it? Uh, shock wave is for simulating, uh, is for representing the speed, uh, the difference the two different traffic status. So this region is different from that region, and this becomes a shock, uh, something like a wave, moving wave. So it's called shock wave. There are two waves. There is a wave here accumulating backward. And let's suppose at this time, the vehicle, this, uh, this cell, this problem, maybe the, the work, the construction has done, has been done. Then the capacity, the inflow, inflow rate has to resume. Then the vehicle, uh, and if the inflow rate, max inflow rate is five, then at every time step, there will be five vehicles going through, going, uh, going to this 11th cell. So there will be another shock wave this way. This shock wave will dissipate, and that wave will accumulate. So you see, this is different from the cellular automata thing. It's not, for, it's not used for simulation, but used for uh, analysis of shock waves. And the biggest difference is the definition of the cell. In cellular automata, it's defined by the vehicle length. And this example, in the cell transmission, is defined by the length, uh, the speed, the distance that a vehicle can travel at a time interval. And today's lecture is pretty short. Thanks.